Welcome back to the channel. I'm just setting everything up, so bear with me a second. I've set up a new cradle for my uh, my camera phone, so it's going to be a little bit wobbly like this. So hopefully, it won't. Uh, it'll settle down a bit. Hang on, let me just uh, sort this out. Don't look at it at the moment if it's going to make you uh, make you seasick. There you go. Hopefully, that should be. Uh, that should be fairly steady. So, welcome to the live stream. What I wanted to talk about today is size comparisons of different figures. I've tried to um, not really... Um, I'm just trying to straighten it up now. I've tried to not really talk about figures too much on the channel because I wanted to keep it to the history side of it and things like that. But, you know, part of me thinks that with the wargaming nature of it too you know there's no point in talking about the uh oh, hang on turn the uh volume off on my monitor there yeah so i think like you know not talking about the miniatures seems to be a bit of a waste of time if we are talking about napoleonic wargaming and the thing that i'm always unsure about is which figure manufacturers are going to fit with other ones so um yeah, you know, I, I like to use a lot of different manufacturers and you know it's not always certain if you're gonna get your value for money or if you're gonna be able to use those figures or not. Now we've got the internet, so there's stuff out there, but surprisingly few resources across a whole range of figures. Now I've got quite a few. I've just taken receipt of my new Bavarian army, which I will be using hat 28 mil figures for. And that got me thinking, let's have a video that is a comparison of all the different kinds. So the ones I'm going to look at today, I've got them lined up in front of me, is Wargames Foundry, Hat, Wargames Foundry Austrians. We'll see that they're slightly different to the, the rest of the Foundry ones. Um, Wargames Factory, which is an offshoot of Wargames Foundry, and Avon Post. I'm also going to be looking at Brigade Games, Perry Miniatures, Victrix, Warlord, and Front Rank. So that's all the infantry I've got to compare. And then for Cavalry, I can also going to look at... Uh, I'm just looking around for one of my figures. I'm not sure where I put him. Uh, but for Cavalry, we're going to look at Perry's Eureka, Gringo 40, Mini Figs, because I've found some of those, uh, Foundry again, and I think that's probably it. Oh, and Hinchcliffe as well. I found a Hinchcliffe as well for you guys who uh, who like your old school stuff. So I can see on the chat. Hello, guys. Hello, Paul, Stephen, Ragnar. Hello. So thank you for joining me. So what I'm going to start off with is sort of in my in my mind, in my thoughts. I've divided them into three categories. Oh, hang on, my cradle's swinging a little bit. Let's try and stop that. I've divided them into three categories. I've divided them into small 28 mil models medium 28 mil models and large 28 mil models so oh dear i'm having real problems with this uh, and large 28 mil models so though i'm gonna start off with the small and we'll work our way up to the largest ones now for my first one that we're going to consider today is this chap here he is a representative of the war games foundry austrians let me get a close-up here he's actually a grenzer if you've seen the video on the Napoleonic Austrians Grenzer, then he is one of those. I've got a tape measure here with me, a B and Q value one, absolutely no expense spared there. And we'll see. I'm going to try and measure from foot to eye as much as possible. Now a lot of these are going to be on bases, so we'll have to do our best. But we can see here. Oh, hang on. We can see if the uh, the camera's going to focus. I think it did a bit and then unfocused. There we are. We can see here that foot to eye. We are at 25 millimetres exactly. So there's two ways of measuring the height of figures. You can either measure from the base to the top of the head or from the feet to the eye line. Now, most of them do to the eye line because obviously you've got different size hats. And we're going to look at today figures with lots of different hats. So that's the standard we're going to use today is base to the eye line. So he's 25 mil. Now, I really like the foundry figures. I bought many, many years ago. I moved in with my girlfriend, and to treat myself, I bought a Foundry Austrian Brigade set. 
Uh, it was £100, and you got, I think it was three units of infantry, a unit of grenadiers, a unit of Jaegers, and a humongous unit of hussars. We'll see some of the hussars in a minute. And uh, yeah, it was 100 quid. It was an insane value for money. <laughs> oh, and all the command as well. She was, uh, she was, <laughs> she was not happy when that got delivered. But uh, yeah, you know, whatever. The uh, the Austrians lasted longer than she did, so uh, that's that's the important thing. So that's the Foundry Austrian. They are very, very small. Now I have occasionally used them. I've put them on a base and I've built up the base with MDF, but they are really small. Being no doubt that if you've got Foundry Austrians in particular, we're going to look at some of their French in a second, then they are super, super small. Just bear with me. My neighbours have decided that this is the weekend that they're going to do all the angle grinding for their paving slabs. So it's very annoying. I've just shut the window. Uh, so hopefully it won't be too bad. So next up is something that's going to be a little bit out of left field is... These chappies. Now, as I said, I've just taken possession of a load of these. Um, but I had a box already. I bought them to check if they were suitable with the Perrys. These are the Hat Bavarians. Now, Hat are a manufacturer who do soft plastic, usually 20 mil. They've got loads and loads and loads of 20 mil stuff, all different periods. But they do do a few boxes of 28 mil as well. They do Bavarians, Bavarian Command. And uh, they do two different types of infantry. They do marching, which is these chaps here. And they also do uh, action poses as well. Now, I haven't got any of those painted up yet. Um, now, these guys are... Let's have a look at the old tape measure. So these are slightly bigger than the uh, the foundry ones. Oh, that's a Facebook thing. I've turned off. They're slightly bigger than the, the foundry Austrians. We can see there they are... About 26 mil. Now they are <coughs> excuse me, they are advertised as 28 mil, but we've just seen they're actually closer to a 26 mil. Now there's something else that's also important as well. We can see that they're 26 mil tall. Now I've actually built their base up so they're gonna be a bit taller on the battlefield, so that's quite cool. But they're not very wide across the shoulders, they're not very chunky. The next figures we're gonna look at are gonna be the foundry ones. Now they're gonna be of a similar height. But they are quite chunky. So I would say, if you're going to go with the hat ones, as I said, they do a Bavarian infantry range. They also do French light infantry. And I think they might do Prussians as well. I'm not sure. But definitely Bavarians and French light infantry they do. Um, so they're quite nice. I'm, going to, I'm actually going to pop them back there. I'm going to leave them there. And we're going to get the War Games foundry ones. Now, these used to be the absolute gold standard of Napoleonic figures, the foundry. They were, they, I mean, they're still lovely today. Really, really nice. But I think they're a little on the small side now. I don't think they're as um, as impressive as they perhaps used to be. So, these uh, you can see I've painted as Italians. I use the, uh, the contrast paints on these. Um, they're not as actually well detailed as I thought I'd done on them. Never mind. Um, so, we can see that height-wise, let's have a check with my tape. Let's have a look. So height-wise, let's do it to this chap here with the uh, the cap on. Hang on. There we go. So let's get to his eye. So we can see that he is. Oh, hang on, it's not focusing. There we are. Oh, go on camera, you can do it. He is about twenty-seven millimeters tall from foot to eye. So he's about slightly taller than. The Bavarian, but as you can see, he's quite substantially chunkier. Now, I would say that height wise, these are not too dissimilar. Let's see if I can, uh, can get them up here. So, height wise, they're fairly similar, but they are much chunkier. You'll see with the frontages, you or you might not have seen that these guys have base three on a 45 millimeter frontage there. Normally, as with these guys, I base on a 20 mil per figure. These have only got 15 mil. So it's a way of making these figures that are a little more slender, the Bavarians, getting them to get that packed in look. They actually look a bit more packed in than the 28 mil ones. So although they're only slender, you can maybe fool the eye a little bit by packing them in six to a smaller base. 
those of you guys who like your 45 mil uh, bases with six guys on, then they're perfect for that. So the next one is an offshoot of War Games Foundry. I'm going to get the, the Foundry ones next to them. These are called War Games Factory. Now these are actually their Imperial Guard engineers. They're quite nice actually. Uh, they've got the uh, like the big crested helms and things like that. I think they're quite a cool unit. So uh, I've also been looking for anyone who does a standard for these. I've got the basic engineers one. Uh, no, sorry, no, I've got the marine one, but not the engineer one. So if anyone knows a company that does the standard for these guys, then please let me know because I've got a standard bearer. So uh, he's currently flagless. Now let's get the old tape measure in and let's have a shifty. Let's hold it up to the camera. So his foot to eye, again, we're looking around about 27 millimeters for him. Now he goes together nicely with the foundry ones, as you'd expect. But these chaps are even chunkier than the foundry ones. Now that might be because they're engineers, to be fair. Uh, and it might be because these guys are sort of square on the engineers. Uh, their shoulders are square to the front there, whereas these guys are a little bit more three quarters on. So I think you can probably get away with using those together. Now, one thing that I would say is that even if there is a little bit of variation, perhaps not the um, the Foundry Austrians, because I think they are very they are super, super small compared to the others. But I think if you you can probably mix the others in the same army, wouldn't use them in the same units. The War Games Foundry and the War Games Factory ones, I think you could probably get away with using those in the same units. Wouldn't necessarily do it, but I think you, you could if you really wanted to. I'm going to try and leave them there. Unfortunately, they're rather unbalanced. So I'm going to leave them there like this. I'm going to pop him there. So that's where we're at so far. You can see they're all along this, this line here on the chopping board. That's why I got it out. But the uh, the Austrian Grenzer, he is absolutely tiny. It's not, uh, to be honest, I'm surprised how small he is. I didn't realize he was that small. Let's get the uh, the hat guys out as well. So have them there as well. Now they're not leaning back. So let's get those up. So as you can see so far, they're all pretty much of the same height, but these chaps are quite a bit thinner. So I'd be happy to use them in the same army. Probably wouldn't put them on the same base though. Despite them being uh, advertised as being 28 mil, I think they're a small 28 mil. Now, this is going to be the last one in the small category. Now, this is going to be quite an unusual. I think it's quite an unusual manufacturer anyway. This is one called Avon Post. Now, they are, I think, a Russian company. Their uh, Carl Merritt seems to be the chap to see to get hold of them. These are their Grenadiers. Now, I've slightly converted them. They've normally got the... Uh, the plates at the front of their shakos but i've covered them with fur and i've done them as the third grenadiers the dutch grenadiers i the fantastic models really nice again though they're quite small and quite thin now i'm not putting any value judgments on these to be honest the smaller thinner ones are probably more sort of you know realistic and accurate than the the larger chunkier ones but the large chunky ones, they're slightly easier to paint. Now, this chap here, he is really tall. To his eye, he is almost three centimetres. He's almost 300 millimetres. But he doesn't really look that tall because, again, he's very narrow across the shoulders. So he's much more useful with smaller figures because he's got that smaller stature. Now, if we pop him here... And we pop it now. Admittedly, he's got the bear skin on. He is a grenadier, but we pop him next to that foundry chap here. Let's nestle him in between the drummer and the officer. We can see here. And I'm trying to do it without him falling over. How how much smaller he really is? Let's try and get the camera to focus in. How much smaller? I mean, he looks like a kid compared to the uh, the Dutch grenadiers there. Uh, so he's too small to be used alongside Avon Post. I also think he's too small to be used alongside the regular Foundry Rangers or Hat or War Games Factory. They're the ones we've looked at so far. These guys, the Dutch Grenadiers, despite being very tall, I actually think they are a good match for the Hat size figures. Now, as I say, 
Uh, I've double based these hat ones so they're they're being boosted up a little bit. The uh, the Dutch are only on a two millimeter thick MDF base, but I think they work quite nicely together. I think that uh, hang on, let's see if I can get it on camera. There we are. I think that the Grenadiers look slightly taller than the line guys, but that's okay because that's the whole point of being a Grenadier is that you are taller than the uh, you know, the rest of the guys. You're a, you're a big lad. Hang on a minute, there's a bit of fluff on there. So I'm I think that's okay. I'm going to sign these up here. What I'm going to do is I'm going to pop them on the mat. And then I'm going to have a quick look at the comments and see if there's any questions I can answer at the moment. So let's get these guys on there. So I'll have to bolster them up with their engineer brethren, just like when they're trying to retreat from Russia. Uh, uh, there we go. And then we've got these guys here. Now you'll see on the bottom of some of the bases, I've also got magnetic strip. So that will, uh, will raise them up even further if you're interested in your magnetic strip. And he goes on there like so. So this is what I call the small category of 28 mil. Now, again, just to run through the figures, I've got War Games Foundry Austrians, who seem to be considerably smaller than the rest of their range. Hat 28 mil. If you are going to buy hat, be careful that you don't buy the 20 mil ones, because they're obviously much, much too small. War Games Factory. Now, these guys do some really, really nice uh, different sets. One of the favorite sets I've got from those is a Russian staff officer set. That's lovely. War Games Foundry. These guys used to be the absolute gold standard. I think their crown slipped a little bit. I think they've got some questionable business practices as well, but this is not really the, uh, the place for that. And these chaps are Avon Post. So these are... The, um, what I would call the small category of 28 mil. So let's have a look at some of the questions. Um, dum, 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 dum. Let's have a look. Captain Smile, you're doing Bavarians as well. Yeah, no, I am. <laughs> yes, I am. Uh, I've been a cheapskate and used the Austrian Victrix with helmets. Obviously not the same uniform, but close off with liquor paint. Yeah, no, that's fair enough. Yeah, I think the head's a bit different, uh, Captain Smythe. And for me, I think there's a real gap in the market for someone to produce um, like separate heads. Like there's a lot in the 40k and fantasy market, particularly the 40k market. You can get loads of different like um, just packs of heads. And I think that would be a really cool thing to do for an Napoleonic historical period as well. So, uh, yeah. Hello, Tim. Great name there. Always uh, glad to see fellow Tims. Hello, Gary. Um, Thelrun Knights. Morning and happy lockdown day from Kendall. Oh, it must be nice being... Uh, being in Kendall in weather like this with no uh, no tourists or anything around. So that must be quite nice. Uh, what do you have for your standard bearers in terms of materials for the standard poles and how do you pose the flags? Well, Andrew, I tend to use um, either the wire spears that come in the Warlord sets. The Perrys come with flag poles as well. They're quite thick, though. Uh, so you can either use wire spears, which you can get from uh, North Star. They sell them. Or you can just use florist wire. Now, I use 0 0.08 millimeters because th th there's a great deep thoughts process that's gone into this. It's the same width as my drill bit. So I use 0 0.08 mil uh, stiff wire, and you can use that. If you want to look at how I um, model the flags, check the third of the uh, Vistula Legion painting uh, live streams that we did because that's where I do the flag for the Vistula Legion. So you'll actually be able to see me do it there rather than try to explain it to you. Um, dun, 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 dun. Oh, Richard Kane, also in Germany. That's good. Yeah, potential meetup there. That's good. Um, I'm super new to historical and don't want to muck it up. Don't worry, Andrew. I know there's um, um, a bit of a um, bit of an idea that historicals, that people are super anal about things. And to be fair, some of them can be. But... Uh, about fairly light-hearted and straightforward on this channel um so i don't think you can go major majorly wrong i think the main thing is if you've got a flag and it's roughly right and it sticks on a the pole then that's good enough my guys have used 1812 flags from you know egypt right through to waterloo because i just think the lozenge one's super cool so um so that's what i use so that's the small 
range of um, Napoleonic figures done. And we're now going to move on to what I refer to as the medium-sized ones. And the first one and the most, probably the most popular one, are the Perrys. Now, I've got some Bavarians of theirs here. Um, and the reason I chose Bavarians specifically was because I'm going to compare them to the hat ones. So these are from the Perry Command set. They are absolutely lovely models. I've missed a bit on the uh, inside of his armor. Uh, but if we compare them to the hat ones, uh, let's go there. They're actually not too much smaller than the hat ones, but they are, again, much, much chunkier. So you could possibly get them in the hat in the same unit as the hat ones. I do think it would look a little bit silly, but I think you could possibly get away with it for Grenadier companies and NCOs, things like that, maybe. Let's get the old tape measure out again and see where their eye level is at. Well, I don't need that much out. Let's see. So there we go. So you can see that the Perrys are... Let's try and get it in the light a little bit. So the Perry's there, you're looking 28, possibly 29 millimetres up to the eye there. Now, I say that's fairly standard. And I think the thing is with the Perry's is uh, realistically their size is the standard because they're the Perry's. They they set what the standard is. They've gone for that sort of heroic, very large hands, very large heads pose, big weapons as well. They're a little less subtle than some of the other medium sized manufacturers that we're going to look at but uh i, I mean I, I really like the perry i'm, I'm not going to uh, not going to pretend i don't uh, they're certainly my favorite when it comes to the 28 mil stuff so uh this next one that we're going to look at now this is an american company i don't see these very often in the uk these are janissaries from uh brigade games now this is part of my secret army project that general andy is not allowed to know about uh, this is part of my Ottoman army. Now, these aren't quite finished yet, but uh, you, we can see I've done the basing on them, so it might be a little bit more difficult to get a height check on these. But let's have a look. Um, oh, I'm turning around. I've seen all the bits I've missed. So these guys are... Well, if I take the sand out of it, I'm going to say these guys are maybe 30 mil, 29 perhaps. They're certainly in the, the larger end of the models. They're certainly taller than the War Games Foundry. Let's have a look. Let's compare those. So they're certainly quite a bit taller than them, but they're about the same chunkiness. So again, it's not only just height that's important because people do vary in height, but generally they don't vary too much in broad, broad wise across the shoulders. Oh, you get people with wide shoulders, but not that much to be honest so i think that chunkiness as i'm going to chunkiness tm i'm going to trademark that is more important than height so i would say if you want ottomans to go alongside uh, some war games foundry i think you're probably okay with that if you want them to go alongside perry's let's have a quick comparison of them uh i mean it's difficult to tell because these bavarians have got such tall helmets on the rupin wrecked is a crazy helmet um, but I'd say again, they're maybe actually a little bit smaller than the uh, than the Brigade Games ones. But uh, yeah, no, I think they're certainly usable as well. The thing with the Ottomans is they're quite a unique army. They're quite different to everyone else. So you're unlikely to want to mix unit types that much anyway. Maybe you could have some British officers in there, things like that. One of the armies that you can do with the Ottomans, of course, is the early British when they're fighting the the um, the French in 1798 he said super super confidently it was 1800 when abercrombie was over there so um you could definitely use them in the same army i think especially with the perry's ones but maybe not in no oh, actually no i think you probably could use them in the same units as well actually so here we go for the next medium size one these are the warlord games they're late french infantry those ones um these guys, again, let's compare them to the Perry's. That's a little bit difficult because they're on different depth bases. But I would say they're about the same. I think the Warlord ones are actually slightly larger than the Perry ones. They're certainly chunkier, but they are wearing great coats, to be fair. So that is going to make them look a little bit broader. Now, their height eye line, again, you're looking at the 30 mil mark. 
maybe 31 mil if i mean i'm i'm up on the uh i'm up on the grass there let's try and uh, let's try and get it down there so we can perhaps see to this chap here that that's about 30 mil so again these on the medium to large side they fit in nicely with the perries um maybe a little bit too big for the um the smaller manufacturers out there so i wouldn't perhaps say let's put them in the same unit as foundry because the foundry you can see are quite a bit smaller there and i certainly wouldn't put them in the same the same unit as the bavarians were warlord to release uh plastic bavarians for some reason uh i certainly and, and that's not me saying like oh yes i know what's coming because i honestly don't uh, every time Warlord will say, oh, we're bringing out this new set. If it's not Plastic Russian Cavalry, then uh, you may have seen me losing my poop on the internet. But um, yeah, so I wouldn't put them in the same unit as these chaps because they're nowhere near chunky enough. Um, but alongside Perry's, I think they're OK. Now, I've actually got quite, if I thought about this, I'd have prepped this, wouldn't I? Uh, I've actually got quite a few stands of Perry's and Warlord combined particularly uh, command groups from one or um, uh, yeah, I might have say a mounted officer in a Perry's unit and the mounted officer is from the warlord unit. They do a really nice one actually. He's a guy reading a map. He's a, he's a lovely model actually. Uh, so yeah, I'd say that they're okay. And the third of the big three, as I'm going to call them, big three if company wise, not rather than height wise, are my favorite manufacturer for the Austrians. Victrix. Now, I'm a huge fan of the Victrix stuff here. Uh, these are Grenadiers, so they are slightly taller than the regular guys. So, let's have a look. Rupin Helm, not Rupin Rec. Yeah, absolutely right, David. Sorry, that was me miss misspeaking there. Um, I do always like fun German words, I have to say. Uh, so, we see here that he's, again, about the 30 mil mark. <coughs> oh, no, excuse me. Now, he's actually slightly smaller than the uh, Warlord Games ones. He's even slightly smaller than the Perry's Bavarians as well, um, despite being a Grenadier. But I really like these figures. I probably wouldn't mix them in the same unit if I could avoid it. But I don't really see that I would need to. I think perhaps the Victrix Mounted Officer is very nice. So he might end up in a... Um, he might end up in a Perry unit, but he's mounted on a horse, so it's not it's not too bad when you mount it because you get different size horses as well. So that's Victrix. So I'm going to pop them there. I'm going to I'm trying to do it so that the the line on the chopping board is around about the top of the base. So these are going in there. Um, I'm going to pop the the War Games Foundry ones here. Just as a bit of a um, bit of a comparison, he needs, he needs to be a bit higher. He needs to go there. I'll sort that out in a second. Uh, the brigade games ones here. Yeah. I'm actually going to slide these along just for extra pain in the arse. This. There we go. I'll we'll get these Perry's ones in there as well because they're on that end of the base. I'll pop them there like so. So you can see. Um, a bit of a height discrepancy there. Remember with the foundry ones, I popped them in here. These guys, the Italians, uh, they're just there as a representative. So I wouldn't have those in with the others. So these are the main, the, four, the three main plastic manufacturers. You've got Victrix, Perry and Warlord and also Brigade Games as well. Now these Perrys are metals, they're not the plastics. I have heard that the plastics are a bit smaller than the metals. Something to do with the casting process. It could be the case, could be. Uh, but we can see they're smaller than the Warlord Games ones already. So it's only going to extenuate that. Uh, they certainly appear to be finer. They're less broad in the shoulders, even the greatcoat ones. So I, I'm, I mix them. I don't have any problem with mixing them. But I think there's a lot of people out there who will. Now, for the large figures, I've got Gringo 40s. Now, I don't have any foot ones of Gringo 40. And I can't find my mounted one at the moment. Um, hopefully, he will turn up at some point. Um, so, the only ones I'm going to look at now 
are these boys. Now, these are hecking chonkers. These are the front rank figures. Now, I am a huge fan of front rank. I really, really like front rank. They're very old school manu manufacturer. They've been going forever. But their figures are humongous. So if we have a look, if we compare them to these uh, Warlord Games ones, we've got the, the Warlord Games there. And then we've got the Russian front rank next to them. So you can see not only are they much bigger, they're much, much chunkier as well. Now, these guys, the Russian Grenadiers, these are a perfect example of how chunk means that you can't really put them in with another unit. These guys, because they're so massive, I actually bought them secondhand. So they were too good to pass up. And I needed to look for things to do with them. Now, because they're so big, I thought, well, the obvious choice is Russian Imperial Guard. They were noted for being big chaps. So that's what I've painted them as. They are phenomenally detailed figures. They're really nice. They've got the uh, the collar detail. I haven't got around to painting that yet. Really, really nice. I can highly recommend them. But they are very, very big. I would not put them in as a unit with, say, the Warlord. And they're the larger of the, uh, the medium-sized ones. So I certainly wouldn't put them in the same unit as Foundry. Uh, sorry, as uh, as the Perrys. Uh, they're, uh, they're much bigger than the Perrys. And again, it's not just the height, it's the heft of them as well. They're much bigger, chunkier models. If you look at the legs, for instance, the, uh, the side, like, looking lengthwise... At the front of this, his thighs are as thick as this one's are deep. So they're massive guys. Russian Grenadiers, i got absolutely no problem with. I think they work really well. Uh, or other types of Grenadiers they could work well with. Austrians, perhaps. But uh, I think for line figures, I mean, they're, they're not specifically sold as Imperial Guard Grenadiers. They are Grenadiers, but not necessarily Imperial Guard ones. So I think they're slightly too big to use alongside other figures. Now, I do have a Marshal Ney figure from Perry's and he's got a front rank Karazia with him and the Karazia is absolutely massive compared to Marshal Ney. So cool, have them in the same army. I would use them as elite units, guys who are known to be particularly big. So Grenadiers are absolutely perfect for them, but I'd have them in Grenadier battalions rather than company Grenadiers alongside Perry's or Warlords because I think they're just too big for that really. I just think they, they look a little bit silly. And obviously, if you were to compare them to, say, the smaller 28mm figures, such as, say, the Hat Bavarians, I mean, they're tiny compared to them, even though they're on a double-thick base. Um, it's just, again, it's not so much the height, but it's the uh, it's the broadness of them. Like, each of these Russians is, like, one and a half the width of these, um, these Bavarians. So, yeah. Front rank, phenomenal models. I would get a regiment of them on their own. All my Russian Imperial Guard is going to be front rank, and I haven't got around to uh, to doing a huge amount on them yet, but uh, but I certainly will. So that's the infantry. I wanted to cover off cavalry as well. I think this is going to be a slightly shorter video than I'd planned. I'll probably go for about an hour. But uh, I didn't realize that it, today was construction day over the road. So uh, I will be doing another live stream tomorrow. Hopefully they'll have done all the uh, the cutting angle grinding by then. And it'll be uh, slightly better. I'll be able to hear myself. I, I don't know if the microphone's picking it up. But uh, yeah, it is quite noisy out there. So the first thing I'm going to do again is we're going to look at the smaller end of the 28 mil range. Actually, no, before I do that, I'll have a quick check. On the uh, the comments, let me see. My computer is not quite working. Let me uh, let me try and refresh that. So I'm going to look at small cavalry now. I'm going to start off with this chap here. He's the smallest of the small. He's also <laughs> he's also a terrible model as well. This is a Hinchcliffe model. Now these are really old. I mean, like really, really old. Uh, and he's very small. Now he is actually. I'm going to do. Um, in fact, no, I didn't, didn't do it on the Grenadiers, did I? Let's do a quick um, eye check on these. Yeah, you can see these are 30 mil, so they're not the tallest, but they're definitely the chunkiest. Now, on here, it's a little bit difficult because he's on a horse as well, but we'll do horse to the eye. Uh, he's about 4 centimetres, 40 millimetres, that chap. Now, horses, obviously, they come in different sizes and different shapes, but a heavy cavalry horse, 
is a heavy cavalry horse. All right, they, they should really be different between nations, but I don't think they are manufacturer-wise. I think they're all pretty much the same height. I'm trying to uh, trying to do this here. There you go. Right, so um, that's the uh, that's Hinchcliffe. He's super old school, like super, super old school. He's more of a classic 25 mil. One that's a big 25 mil and some more old school action are some mini figs here. Now, I really like mini figs. What I like to call them mini pigs. Their 50 mil ones are just absolutely amazing. I absolutely love their 50 mil ones because <laughs> they're not very good, but uh, they're just really good fun. And again, from foot to eye, you're looking around about four. You can't see it there. You're looking about 40 mil. It's difficult to get in there because of the way they're based. Let me see if I can uh, get a closer in one on here. Uh, da, 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 da. Let's get it so his arm's not in the way. Maybe a little bit more than that. Maybe 42 mil, 43 perhaps. Um, so these are a little bit bigger. They can be fitted in with um, other manufacturers a little bit easier perhaps than the, uh, the Hinchcliffe ones. They're way, way too small. So the next size up. We're going to look at the old classics for the uh, the tiny figures. These chaps, Austrian Hussars. Now, one of the things with these is they're obviously part of the Foundry Austrian range. They are tiny, as are all of the Foundry Austrians. But because they've got these um, pelisers over one shoulder, they actually don't suffer from being too skinny. So you can actually get away with having them in Perry or Warlord sized armies. Now, as you can see, I've put them on a raised base. That's an old Games Workshop 50 mil base. And I've also glued a green 50 mil base on the bottom of them. I'm also going to magnetize the bottom. So this is all going to help boost their height a little bit, maybe give them a bit more self-esteem. But these guys are about 41 millimeters, 40 to 41 millimeters. Um, so we're looking about the same height as the Hinchcliffe guy. Uh, so if we have those next to each other, like so, you can see he's a bit taller than him, but again, it's that heft, it's that that width that allows these guys to perhaps be used alongside larger ones. I wouldn't put them in the same unit. I would put them in the same army, absolutely, but I definitely wouldn't put them in the same unit. So now we get to the Perrys. So I've got some Perry cavalry here. Now these are line lancers. Uh, these are fairly sort of standard guys. They're not like cavalry. They are dragoons, effectively. Uh, so I thought I'll use them as an example of medium cavalry. Oh, hello, just knock them over. Um, and their eye height is about 42 millimeters. So it's slightly larger than the Hussars, not massively so, but they are beefy across the shoulders, and that's what really helps them stand out. Now, for me, the Perrys are going to be the standard cavalry. Here is a Perry Austrian. I just wanted to uh, to compare them alongside the uh, the foundry ones. You can see that the Perry one is uh, is quite a bit taller than the foundry ones. Uh, now the Perrys, because they do the full range of plastic cavalry that they do, uh, when it comes to cavalry, the Perrys are sort of the the average for me. They are the gold standard. Um, so they are, you know, if you consider them to be medium sized, then everyone else is either small or large compared to them so the next one now those the the foundry austrians and uh perry austrians i wouldn't put on the same base something that i have put on the same base is of as a perry is this chap here now he is a gringo 40 uh figure the kettle drummer there and he not to put too fine a point on it is absolutely humongous his horse is massive compared to the perry one However, 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 I've done it for two reasons. One is I lost one of my Polish uh, lances. I don't know where the hell he went. So I had to replace him with something. I didn't want to buy a whole pack of three, so I just got this kettle drummer instead. And the second point is that kettle drummers would ride big horses anyway. If you've ever seen uh, the Trooping of the Colour or anything like that, you'll see that the, um, the kettle drummer's horse is a Shire horse traditionally. Now, I don't know if they have Shire horses in Poland, or France, to be honest. Um, I don't know. But uh, I thought, well, there's going to be a big horse anyway. So I can get, I can use him alongside the pole 
and just use that as my excuse for having him. But the Gringo 40s, they are mahoosive compared to the Perrys, as you can see. The horse is a good... Uh, I mean, all right, his, his head's lowered a bit and his is a bit more upright. But even so, just rumps-wise, you can see there's a, a significant size difference between the rumps there. You can get away with it for certain figures. He needs finishing off that kettle drummer by the look of it. I'm saying that a lot about my figures today, aren't I? Um, you can get away with it for certain figures. I think he gets away with it quite nicely. But the majority of them, uh, I probably wouldn't combine them in a unit. Uh, going on to the next one. Now, I haven't even opened this chap yet. So let's see. He is from Eureka Miniatures. Now, Eureka Miniatures do a very limited um, range of Napoleonics. They do some really nice civilians and vignettes. I saw someone was asking about vignettes. Um, I, I bought the Cantonary and the bread oven one recently. Um, I haven't really sorted it out yet, though. Uh, but they do Saxon heavy cavalry as well. Now, this is the trumpeter for the, is it the Zapau Karaziers, I think it's pronounced. I got these guys from Fighting 15s. They've currently got a sale on. They are half price, effectively. I managed to get all 12, well, 12 to make a unit, a casualty for, I think it was, I don't know why, I think it was like 25 quid. I don't, I'm not sure if one of them was reduced or if they uh, they forgot to charge me for one or something, I don't know. But uh, for less than 30 quid, you can get a unit of these chaps, which from um, Eureka UK cost £4.10 a figure. So... I would get them from Fighting 15s. They've only got them until they sell out. I would get them sooner rather than later. Even if you just, oh, well, I might do Saxons one day, I would get them just in case. Now, as you've seen, I've just opened the packet and got these guys out, so I've got no idea where they uh, they fit in the size demographic. The horse looks about the same rump to rump as the Perry's. Now, the rider's obviously leant forward quite a lot. The Perry's is a lot more upright. But I would suggest he's perhaps a little bit smaller than the Gringo 40s. Let's compare him to this guy. Yeah, he's quite a bit smaller than him. But because he's leaning forward, he can get away with either being with a Gringo 40 or he could get away with Perry's as well. Now... I don't know why you wouldn't have just a full unit of these, but I would suggest that you could probably mix in Perry's if you wanted to. There is a, they do do a set of these standing at rest as well. So if you wanted a little less um, dynamic unit, maybe you wanted them to be General's Guards or something like that, then you could use the ones at rest as well. So finally, I've got another Gringo 40 model to look at. This is the one that I said I couldn't find. Is this chap here? It's Marshal Mura at the Battle of Elau. Not one of his most uh, fancy of uniforms, but still not a bad one. Zastro, thank you very much. Yeah, um, yeah, not one of his more spangly uniforms, but he's again, he's another gringo. Now, again, he's also pretty big as well. If you compare him to the Perry, I mean, his horse, I mean, his horse is huge. I mean, that's almost a fantasy size horse. Um, I've seen some manufacturers where the horses have been a bit too small. This is definitely not one of those cases. He looks like the size of a front rank horse, which I've got over here. Hang on. So this is, well, I'll come back to him in a second. Um, so he's the size of a front rank horse, but, uh, the man on the back is probably, he's a chunky Perry size, I would say. So he's probably more front rank size as well. So these guys, Gringo 40s. Wouldn't mix them in a unit with the Perrys. They do do some nice... They do a really nice NCO smoking a pipe. Not sure about their infantry, to be honest. But cavalry-wise, I wouldn't put a Perry figure on this base with him. But I might find myself a front rank... Um, a front rank cavalryman to grab and pop on the base with him. So, uh, yes, we'll see how it goes there. Rara rides a crippled horse. Front legs are broken. Yeah, no, he's he is a chunky boy. I'm not even sure he's a he's a, a genetic, uh, genetically a horse, to be honest. I mean, his neck, I mean, look at the size of the neck on that. I mean, I know horses have big necks, but oh, blimey, anyway, yeah, he's re he's a lovely figure. I do not regret getting him, but he's very, very big lad. Now, finally, for the horses, 
I'm going to look at this chap here. Now, he's a front rank horse. He is also super chunky. If we compare him to, say, this one, we can see that he's quite a bit cruder than the um, the Eureka Mini Afro. I forgot where it came from then. Um, and he's also quite, he's, I don't know, he's, he's oddly proportioned. Now, this is the rider. I'm going to pop him on. He's actually a seven years war Russian, this one. So let's pop him on there. And height wise, he the man is smaller than the Perry's rider by the looks of things. Let's have them together like so. So rider wise, they're about the same height, but he's a lot skinnier than the Perry one. Uh, but the horse is massive. So uh, it's difficult to say where I'd put those chaps. Um, again, you're probably looking your best bet would be to have a unit that's made up entirely of um, front rank figures. I probably wouldn't mix them in if I could avoid it because they there's just such a big chunk difference between them that I, I just think that they, they wouldn't fit so well together. So I've got them all lined up here. Let's have a look. Oh, there we are. I'm going to try and tilt it without them all sliding off. I'm not entirely sure how successful this is going to be. Hang on, let me get this pencil. That might help. So we can see here that there is quite a big difference between, say, the drummer and the certainly the um, the foundry ones. But um, overall, the cavalry not too bad because there's a lot more differentiation in horses than there is in people, I tend to find anyway. Uh, I'm certainly no horse expert, no horse whisperer, I. But uh, I tend to find cavalry, you can get away with it a lot more than you can with infantry. So that's it for today. Uh, like I said, I was hoping to do a bit more, but I'm conscious of the uh, the angle grinding going on outside. I'm going to do a paint-along session tomorrow. I'm actually going to be looking at horses. This chap may be one of the ones that I'm going to do, or I might end up doing the guard to call. Um, what I'm going to, to be showing is how I paint horses using oil paints. Now, I tend to use oils rather than acrylics for two reasons one you get a really nice um these guys are painted with oils so you get some nice um detailing of the muscles and things like that on there which i think is quite nice uh, it also works for the tails quite nicely as well but the other reason is it's difficult to see on camera but you get a sheen off of the horses as well which is very much like a you know a horse's hair things like that they're not matte they're um they're quite sheen when you look at them they look quite shiny so that's what i'm going to be looking at tomorrow i might also be cracking on with some more poles um they they're, they're getting quite well done actually i've got just over a battalion and a half finished so they need a bit more work doing to them but uh tomorrow's focus is going to be on cavalry thank you very much for watching today so i'm just going to run through a quick thing again um i might clip this sort of two minute run through at the end just so people you know if they're searching for size comparison or whatever can see it very quickly so infantry wise from smallest to largest i've got uh war games foundry at the very very small end of the, the table don't use them with anyone else sorry that's war games foundry austrians war games foundry austrians that's important because this is war games foundry french now i wouldn't use them with other uh other manufacturers either but you can possibly get away with it i probably wouldn't though we've got hat 28 mil nice the, the height wise not too bad but they're quite slender which is why i've got them on the much smaller base than i would normally base on um then i've got the war games factory they do some lovely vignettes they also do some nice engineers of the guard that we can see here and then avon post these ones here, phenomenal models. The Avon Post ones, really, really nice. They're almost, um, almost too nice to paint. Really, they're more um, collector pieces than gaming ones. Very, very nice though. So then on the medium sized ones, I've got Brigade and Perry. Probably wouldn't mix those together in the same unit, but I would 
mix Warlord together with the Perrys. I would and do quite frequently. And also Victrix on the end there. So we've got small, medium, and then large in their own at the bottom, the, uh, the front rank. Now, I would suggest that with front rank, probably Eureka and Gringo 40s will be alongside here as well. I just don't own any, any of their infantry. So that's it for the um, the infantry. Foundry Austrians, uh, Foundry, Hat, Wargames Factory, and um, Avon Post. They're the small category. Medium, Victrix, Warlord, Perry, Brigade, Large, Front Rank. So let's get rid of those. And then for the cavalry, just on the small side of the, the classics, rather than the new ones, small ones are your Hinchel your Hinchcliffs and your uh, minifigs. So I'll put them up there. Mediums, we've got the Perrys. And smaller than the Perrys, we've got Wargames Foundry. So I'll pop those. In fact, I'll do them that way. So they're back to back. And then large, we've got the... Uh, let's see if I can press those against each other. And then large, we've got the Gringo 40s. Front rank will be large as well. I haven't got an example of that to show you, I'm afraid. And also the... Uh, oh, sorry, and another medium-sized one were the Eureka ones as well. So small, minifigs, Hinchcliffe, medium... Well, medium-small would be found Wargames Foundry. Medium-medium, Perry's and the uh, Eureka one. I always forget their name. Uh, Eureka and the Warlord as well. I haven't got any of those out to show you, but Warlord would be medium size as well. And then large Gringo 40s and the, uh, the Gringo 40. And, no, that's it. Gringo 40. There you go. Is large and front rank, presumably, as well. So minifigs are 25 mil. Uh, yes, they are. They're like traditional 25 mil. Very old school. Uh, paint some horses. Yeah, I'll be doing that tomorrow. I got to 6 a.m. to watch this. Well, thank you very much, David. That is very impressive. These these are recorded, and they'll be on the uh, thing. But thank you very much. As you're up at six, have you got any questions to ask me before I go? Um, and Avon Post, Maxim, ooh, Maxim Ribtkov. Oh, I don't know. I've probably mispronounced that. If you're here on my channel for the correct pronunciation of things, you are definitely in the wrong place. So I do apologise, Maxim. But yeah, Avon Post are a Russian manufacturer. I think they're Russian. And they are very slender. Uh, as David points out, that's probably more realistic. Yeah, I agree. Um, but, you know, it's, it's, it's that choice, isn't it? What do you prefer? I love the fact that there's so many different manufacturers out there that mean that you get to have that choice. You can either have the slender realism of something like Avon Post. Well, what have I done with them? Uh, you can have the slender realism of these guys. Uh, or you can have the chunky, uh, chunky appeal of these guys. Now, as, as a chunky boy myself, uh, I actually really like the front rank ones, but uh, there is absolutely no denying the artistry that has gone into the Avon Post ones. I can highly, highly recommend them. I, I have not in any way done them justice when I've been painting them. They are really, really nice models. Um, let's see. Any chance of doing a one seventy second show comparison? Uh, I could do, however, for 172nd scale, there is a website called Plastic Soldier Review, and they have every 172nd scale figure set ever that, that I can think of, right back to, um, uh, right back to, what's the, the ones I'm thinking of? Revel, Italieri, Matchbox, um, Atlantic, right back to, to those ones, up to Zvezda and Hat today. So I could do. Um, you don't see any comparison on the site. There is at the bottom of... So they have all the pictures laid out of the figures. And at the bottom of that, they have like five little men. And one of them's highlighted. And that gives you an indication of where they stand in the order. I mean, I could do. Uh, it's certainly something that is a possibility. Let me have a look. Uh, I've got some, uh, some uh, Zvezda. Hat Karazias here. Uh, there's Vesda Hat Karazias. What am I talking about? Zvezda Spanish Karazias here. And uh, they still need a lot of work. 
a lot of work doing on them. But uh, they are super cool. I really like I really like those Vesda ones. Um, but yes, I mean, it's, it's certainly something for the future. I'm trying to focus on 28 mil. Um, but yeah, oh, no, 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 no. 172nd scale, Dave Collins. Oh, my Lord. You uh, you have absolutely no idea. If I can uh, quickly show you behind the scenes, behind the curtain, then um, hang on. It's, you can see up here. Uh, there we go. All those boxes there, they're all full of 172nd scale stuff. It's uh, it's it's quite upsetting. But uh, yeah, oh no, hang on. I can't get my, my camera set. I know I shouldn't have moved it. Right, but that's it going to be it for today, chaps. Oh, hang on. I don't know what the hell's going on there. I think my camera's gone dead, is it? Um, thank you very much for tuning in. Hopefully tomorrow we're not going to be accompanied by angle grinding. And uh, I will see you chaps then. Thank you very much. And goodbye.